So if you thought about selling your house here in North County, San Diego, one of the best ways to get buyers interested in your property, one of the biggest marketing tools you do have is that list price setting that list price. Well, today we're gonna to get into five things to help you set that list price because ultimately, as real estate agents, we will help guide you along the way, but it really comes down to what you say. So you are in charge of the whole process. We'll guide you, let you know kind of our thoughts, where maybe positioning should be, but the five things that go into helping you set your list price, that's what we're gonna get into right now. And we love making these videos for you, but we're also real estate agents right here in North County, San Diego. So if you do have some questions, you want to know the value of our, your house, you just want to know what's going on in the market, hit us up, the number's popping up right now. Call, text, email, we got your back. We're moving in and around North County, San Diego. I'm Chris Erickson. I'm Cassidy Lewis. And we're with the Beach Life Group right here in Encinitas. So let's jump into five things to help you set your list price. The first thing you wanna do is look at the comparable sales in your area. So this is looking at what's sold recently. This is what has gone pending or into escrow. And then also if there's any active properties because those active properties are your competition when you're going live on the market. And what we do is we put together a comparative market analysis of your property that's giving you all of those details of those properties, which also includes what's been upgraded, like all the photos. So what's been upgraded, what are the differences between your house and these houses to kind of give you overall picture picture of what the comparable sales are in your community. This can be done by the homeowner also but ahead of time. Obviously you can use some of those outside websites to be able to see some of these things but we really get into kind of a little more detailed not just what Zillow thinks your house is worth but what actually is selling for in your neighborhood. Yeah one of the best comparable that you can look at Cassie mentioned active and pendings or things that are in escrow but the best is actually sold because those have closed the price is set and that's going to be your best indication of what you should set your list price at. The second tip when setting your list price is gonna be factoring in a bunch of stuff, but one of the main ones is gonna be location. Where is your home located? A home located on a main road as opposed to like on a cul-de-sac, a nice little quiet area, there's gonna be some value in there, especially when buyers are cruising around. So if the cul-de-sac home sold for like a million dollars and you wanna list your home that's on the main road for a million dollars, it might not get that final amount just because Location is huge. It's the old real estate adage, location, location, location. But that really comes down to what you should set your list price at. Take all that into account. What do you back up to? Do you have a view? There's a lot of different little things to take into account when looking at the location piece of this pie. Part of location isn't just like, do you back to a main road or in a cul-de-sac, but it's also, what are you close to? Can you walk to schools? Or can you jump in the car real quick and get to a market or some of those amenities that you want? Is there a park across the way? Is there some of those things that are important factors when a buyer's looking? are things you wanna take into account when setting your list price. The third tip is something you can do. It's gonna cost you five, six, seven hundred bucks, but it's getting an appraisal, which is hiring a third party to come out. There's appraisal companies all over. You can just hire them out, have them come look at your property. It's uh, potentially a neutral third party where they're going out and they're gonna do that basically CMA for you and come up with their value of the property and let you know this all these homes sold for this much. Let's take into account square footage. Let's take into account all the different amenities, upgrades, how many different rooms, all that kind of stuff. And then they're gonna come up with a value at the end. Now this is obviously not necessarily what you should set your list price, but it's a really could potentially be a good guide as to where you're standing. But obviously take into account the CMA, kind of current market conditions and really dive in. Don't just get the appraisal and set it at that because it can fluctuate even in like right now in a market that's changing rapidly. You could have gotten appraisal two, three months ago and it could be totally different value right now because of how quickly the market has changed. And part of that too is like Chris said, don't just set it at that appraisal level. Talk about it with a real estate professional because we're out actually looking at properties. We're out making offers on these properties where appraisers are really just looking at numbers. They're looking straight across the board. They have values for an extra bedroom or values for a half bath or all of that where we're actually seeing there's 10 to 15 offers or there's houses sitting on the market for 60 days. We're seeing the actual things that are happening, which isn't really taken into account when the appraiser is putting together a number. This next one is definitely market dependent. It depends if it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, but in this case, we're kind of talking about it being a little bit more of a buyer's market. It's kind of setting that expectation that you might not get what you think you're gonna get, you know, that initial list price. So having a little bit of wiggle room just in your head of, Maybe I'll set the list price at a million, but I'm okay if it gets down to 950. Something like that, like where you have, your expectation is set, 
not just that I have to hit this number and then that's the end all be all of setting the list price. And even when you do get into contract, let's say you do get it at that million dollars, sometimes the buyers are gonna ask for concessions of potential repairs or potential credits from you so that ending number might be a little bit less, well, closing costs and stuff too, but it's gonna be less than that million dollars. So in your mind, leave a little bit of wiggle room so when it does or potentially does come in a little bit less than you initially expected, you'll be set for that. The fifth tip when setting your list price is gonna be take into account other market factors. So how is the current market? Like at the beginning of 2022, it was a crazy hot market. So you could set your list price and potentially get a lot of different offers driving that list price up. Now we're in a little bit changing market, so it's a little bit more of a buyer's market. So you don't wanna really overprice the home because it just turns off potential buyers nowadays with everybody having so much access to information, checking out all these online websites, seeing what has sold, doing their own CMAs in their head as they're looking for properties, you don't want to overprice it in that situation because ultimately it's gonna sit and then you're gonna have to potentially reduce the price to bring it to where the current market is. Some of the other factors too that kind of go along with the market is condition. There's markets where condition doesn't matter at all. Like Chris mentioned earlier this year, when it is a super hot market, people will make offers above list price, even if it's in poor condition or it's never been upgraded. But as you get into a little bit more of a buyer's market, the condition of the property makes a way bigger difference. Are you gonna get it staged? Are you gonna have upgrades done? Those things are really more important as it is harder to sell your house. Just trying to make it as dialed in as possible. Some of the other conditions too that we have to think about are time of year. You know, here in San Diego, fall and winter tend to be a little bit slower for real estate than those spring and summer months. So when you're gonna put your house on the market also kind of drives that list price. And if you guys do need some more information, you wanna start the conversation and kind of figuring out what should be the list price of your home you've already decided to sell, hit us up, call, text, email, that number is popping up right now. We got your back when making the move here in North County, San Diego.